for the massive part of human existence. Feeding yourself and acquiring food would have been what occupied every thought of every day. I think it's probably something quite instinctive and intrinsic within us to, to want that connection with nature and to want that connection with our food. We're animals and we forget that sometimes and I think just touching the soil, it, it, it just changes, changes everything, it takes away so, so much anxiety, depression, all sorts of mental health problems. Let's Grow Preston is amazing. It is changing lives in the city. They are creating huge opportunities for these neighbourhoods to thrive, um, for people to come out of their homes to connect with nature and to connect with other people within their community. They're also supporting some really vulnerable individuals to become part of that, that wider network and to thrive themselves. The fact that they're doing stuff around sustainability is brilliant, but also trying to tackle uh, unfairness in our communities, which is quite embedded and has been for some time. After my first baby, I decided that I would take a course in, in uh, horticulture. And when the vicar found out, of my local church, he said, well that's great, you can run the community garden then. And I'd only been manning the, the community garden for a couple of months when Preston City Council invited all community garden leaders and friends of open spaces and allotmenteers to, to come and see if they, we would like to become a network and that's how Let's Grow Preston was created. Initially it, it, it was just something to give some ongoing support to, to the network of environmental projects around the city. We helped establish what was initially called Preston Environment Forum and later developed into what, what we see today, Let's Grow Preston. The thing that inspires me the most is watching the change in people when they come and volunteer with us. I think the longer you've done it, the more you see the effect of what we do on our volunteers and the people we get involved with and see how you can change people's lives with, with, with gardening and horticulture. Green therapy actually improves a person's mental health condition. I had a, a service user or a client who came to Let's Go on Monday morning. First thing that he said was, it, 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 it's quiet, it's peaceful and, I'm, and I feel relaxed. Just within like five to ten minutes of being there, you know, as somebody who's quite stressed and anxious, you know, that had just dissipated. I mean, I've also had surface users who have schizophrenia, who hear voices, and we tend to find that they go for that period of time that they're in that green space. If I can see the sky and the trees, then I'm going to feel happier and calmer. It will help you heal faster if you connect with nature. It's the green therapy, it's actually doing the activities, but also it's providing, I would call a safe haven, you know, where somebody can go do some gardening, uh, but also have a brew, chat to other people. And one of the spin-offs is people who have lost contact with friends and family are making new acquaintances and new friends. So it's creating a social structure for people. My best friend passed away of cancer. I then took her child under my wing and I uh, decided to take her on as my own. Whilst I was away, she took her own life. I didn't want to go back to where I lived in Essex without my uh, foster daughter. And I was in a, in a very dark place. I went and sat under a tree every day and I used it as a way of kind of supporting me, literally and, and, and physically. So I went looking for houses everywhere across this whole the Lancashire area and eventually I was offered a house and the, and the house that I got was right next to where the tree was. I was seeing uh, Giovanni from CPET who supported me, took me on walks and um, gave me a lot of advice and kind of helped me decipher all the things in, in my head that I was going through and then he referred me to Let's Grow Preston. Annie has supported me, she's taught me a lot about the plants, she's taught me a lot about just how to be patient with yourself. I need to be patient with myself just like I have to be patient with this plant growing. There's a saying, grief is love with nowhere to go. So instead of just being broken, I, every time I felt sad I planted something and every time I planted something I felt better. I turned around one day and the garden was just filled 
with flowers and plants. And I realized that all that pain that I had had actually created something beautiful. So I decided I wanted to focus my life and my future in nature and looking after her. Creating community gardens and creating pleasant green spaces was probably what drew me to it and excited me most about it. We want to see beautiful gardens, we want to see communities growing food, but we don't want that to be having a negative effect on, on, on the environment and on wildlife. We deliver courses on recycling water, on growing food without the need for pesticides and artificial fertilisers. We recycle, we upcycle, um, we reuse, we make our own compost and then we mulch. If you follow the no dig system, which is all about mulching and creating your own compost, that sequesters carbon. And because it's sequestering that carbon, then your food grows better. When you're looking at thriving communities, I see somewhere that is safe that people are friendly to each other, where people have full bellies so that they make good decisions. And I see that being possible by collaborating with the food hubs, by collaborating with all the other grassroots organisations. I think the, the trend was asset sharing, but we used to say back scratching. If I'm growing food and then another organisation is showing you how to cook it and then another organisation is showing you how you can potentially plan and if we're collaborating on all those things then that person's going to feel multi-layers of support and any changes that we make to their lives is going to be more sustainable. It's going to have a greater impact on their life. You know the cost of living crisis, the energy crisis, the post pandemic has had a massive impact on people's way of life. And I think having uh, strategic partnerships with Let's Go Preston and many other similar organisations within the heart of the city helps us deliver the services that we need to deliver for our service users and the community. Preston City Council contacted all the grassroots organisations and said, how can we help you to, to feed and, and make sure that all of your local communities are OK during COVID? They were amazing during the pandemic, provided tons and tons of food for our food network and I know Annie's really keen on growing that network and making that more sustainable. Crucially for us what they're doing is helping us tackle inequalities because a lot of the food that's grown here is distributed through the community sector to make sure that people actually have access to affordable food. I think the uh, relationship with Let's Go Preston is key. It's key to a lot of stakeholders, a lot of partners, we're one of them. I think the last statistic that Annie gave us was it's probably feeding 8,000 families. Today um, it's all about our food club day um, and it's giving access to uh, nutritional food to the local residents which is up to about 700 households and it's making sure that they've all got access to a nutritional diet. Let's go Preston have been going about 10 years and they've always helped us with the fruit and veg from their allotments and in the summer and sometimes in the winter time. And they're also really helpful because um, they go and collect our food from Fair Share. We've had a strong relationship with Preston City Council right from the start. It was um, you know, members of their staff who helped establish the forum. We work very closely and it's a relationship that, that, that benefits us both. We've been given access to and leases for sites that allow us to do our work, to grow the stuff for the food banks, to give all those volunteering opportunities. Preston Council have had sites that probably would have become a headache to them, that we've been able to, to turn them into productive, useful spaces. None of us can make the change we want to on our own. The Preston model is, is really focused on anchor organisations, really critically anchors in the community, like Let's Go Preston and, and people like Annie who've got the vision and the energy to really drive change in, in their communities. For us to build change, we've got to work with many community organisations like this. If there's an initiative that we have, whether it's cost of living or an environmental initiative or mental health or whatever, they always engage and they do what they can to help. So I think it's pretty brilliant what they're doing here. The help that we get from locality is that it keeps you grounded. It's knowing that somebody else has been there. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. 
it is the solidarity, it's the networking, it's the fact that you're not on your own, it's the fact that if you've had a problem then probably several other people have had similar and will have a different perspective on that solution. Humans need to run in a tribe and they need to run in a pack and that's what locality gives you. Annie and uh, Let's Go Preston have supported me a lot with setting up Guardians of Nature. I started that kind of in remembrance of my, um, my foster daughter because she had nowhere to go, she had no support. Um, it's just having somewhere for people to go and just be themselves and just, you know, have something to do uh, in nature and just kind of slow down as well. So I have found an, an old allotment right next to the tree um, that I used to sit under. It was basically disused and falling apart and um, so I went in with a group of people all with different mental health problems, all struggling with, with just life in general and we've regenerated this little area. Um, the councils have noticed this and they've let me have the woodlands that my tree's in as an area that we can basically be guardians of. The work that it's doing is invaluable and you can see how this is the sort of place that would change someone's life. So it's definitely key for the future. Here became my home uh, and they've just welcomed me with open, open arms and shown me a whole new way of life and without um, services like Let's Go Preston, I don't know where I would be right now. It might not be the newest, smartest place, but it's got kind people. And that's the power of community to me. It's just supporting people to make really good choices.